Ubisoft is a special place, full of special people and predators. At Ubisoft, we believe in setting high standards. And we will even rig competitions to guarantee those standards. At Ubisoft, we deliver value to the player. But if we can't be bothered, we'll give them ducks. Yeah, they're cheap, give them ducks instead. At Ubisoft, we like children. But failing that, extremely young girls will do instead. At Ubisoft, we help children grow. Well, we groom them for a career of gambling addiction. At Ubisoft, we create a safe space. A safe space for sex abusers and rapers. We are Ubisoft. Show us on the doll where the senior manager touched you. Once again, I have seen the 21 kiloton signal in the sky above New York and realised that my very particular set of skills were once again required in the division. So I finished eating my bigot sandwiches, pulled on my fat cape, jumped in the mobility mobile and slowly and frankly begrudgingly rolled my arse back into the world of the division 2 the world's most infamous gambling addiction facilitating dumpster diving simulator. It became immediately apparent that all is not well in the house of Ubisoft. Oh yeah, and the game is fucked too. Ubisoft seems to be having a bit of a perception issue. On the outside, it's a corporation that sports a cuddly, smiling, child-friendly reputation you know, like that friendly, slightly creepy uncle who always seems to find an excuse to take the kids out to the garden for a wrestling competition at family parties. But sadly, on the inside, Ubisoft seems to be exactly like that creepy uncle. You know, disingenuous, manipulative and predatory. Oh yeah, and they seem to like to force themselves on young girls too. I have been banging on about the difference between the dream and the reality of Ubisoft for a very long time now, but in the light of the recent revelations and events, it certainly has the whiff of a rebranded concentration camp. You know, it's all palm trees and playgrounds at the entrance, but walk through those inner gates and it's all electrocuted testicles and crocodile clips on the nipples. Whilst Yves Guimau hangs out on his balcony with a sniper rifle, ready to headshot any member of staff that complains about the rapey officers. But enough hyperbole. No, seriously, we don't need hyperbole. We don't need exaggeration or speculation. The fucked up shit that Ubisoft is really doing is going to provide us with more than enough sickness to share around. A point of factual order before I continue. It has been pointed out to me that I have been mispronouncing Ubisoft for years. Apparently, the correct pronunciation is Ubisoft. But thinking is hard, and I don't give a fuck about their branding, so I will continue to mispronounce it. I just wanted to let you know that I know that I'm saying it wrong, whilst having no fucks to give about that fact. Although if Ubisoft promises to stop its community managers from raping more girls at gaming conventions, 
I might consider making an effort. Not much of an effort, but some. I guess we should investigate the crime scene that is Ubisoft's butchered reputation. So grab your ultraviolet flashlights and let's start looking for those semen stains. When I first joined the force, I assumed there was semen on everything. And there was some like huge semen database. Ubisoft's current HR policy seems to be modelled on a Jeffrey Epstein party. Well, the big story in mainstream news, union and law enforcement circles is that there has been a giant airdrop of sexual assault, bullying and abuse accusations raining down on Ubisoft. What is worse is that it appears that it's not just random staff. It seems to be systemic, structural abuse and management seem to be complicit in covering it up and silencing people who complain. And it goes all the way to the very top of the company. And I mean to the CEO's bestie. I have no doubt that the current flood of Me Too accusations in the gaming community and the Salem Twitch trials are far too well timed coordinated and well orchestrated to be entirely organic and spontaneous. They are without doubt a resurgence of Gamergate, and like Angry Joe's accusations, conveniently swept the shit show of The Last of Us 2 fail launch out of the news. However, the sheer volume of accusations levelled at Ubisoft are very problematic. If only 10% of them are true, that place is a fucking abuser's paradise. Now combine this with the fact that these accusations did not jump out of the ether. Complaints have been smouldering away for many years. This is just the point where the flames burst through the walls and set fire to the rafters. Ubisoft's chief creative officer, renowned psychopath and well-known sex pest Serge Hasco, resigned from the company effective immediately after multiple allegations of misconduct and inappropriate behaviour, and an external auditor has been pulled in to investigate this systemic abuse. I guess to appease the shareholders and rubber stamp some kind of future claim that it's all fine now. Yanis Mallet, managing director of Ubisoft's Canadian studios, and Cecile Cornett, the company's global head of HR stepped down too. Don't know why, but I can only imagine that given that Ubisoft has a reputation for setting aggressive lawyers on any workers making sexual abuse claims, those wankers could technically be characterised as facilitators. I guess every Jeffrey Epstein needs a Ghislaine Maxwell. It logically therefore follows that Ubisoft has so many Epsteins, it needed an entire department of Ghislaine Maxwells. Ashraf Ismail, Assassin's Creed Valhalla creative director, stepped down too, accused of sexual misconduct with fans. From what I gather, he was hitting on girls up to 20 years his junior, lying about the fact that he was married with kids, fucking them and travelling home to wifey. Although, let's keep this in perspective, this guy lies about being married and hits on girls 20 years younger than him. If this was a crime, then the Metropolitan Police would be parking vans outside nearly every fucking bar in the City of London Financial District and carting half of the investment bankers off to jail every night. Shitty behaviour? Yes. Criminal? No. Still, using your position at Ubisoft to stalk the hotties? Not such a smart move, really. Look, I'm not going to judge the guy because he's a dirty bastard and hits on younger women. But he was in a position of trust and sleazing on the job. It would be kind of nice if parents could drop their teenage daughters off at a gaming convention without having to worry about them getting fucked by married Ubisoft developers. Just saying. Ubisoft and Insomniac Games in Sofia are facing a fucking barrage of complaints for mistreating its female employees, and one member of staff has been accused of rape. 
I'm not sure if this is the same member of staff that got shit-faced at an office party and tried to choke out a female member of staff, but there are literally so many rape, sexual assault and abuse charges, I am struggling to keep up with this whole shit show. Community and influencer manager for Save the Children US, John Sylvester, has accused Associate Director of Public Relations Stone Chin at Ubisoft and his cronies of being sexual predators. Apparently because of the way they were sleazing on young girls at gaming conventions amongst other things. When Save the Children, a fucking kids charity, is accusing a Ubisoft PR guru and community manager of being a creeper well, that's not a good look. Although you have to love the irony, right? Stone Chin works in public relations and he is at the centre of this fiasco. It's my man Stone Chin. That was his G moment. That was his G moment. From now on, when I see anyone at Ubisoft who works in community management and PR, in my head, I'm going to assume the P stands for pedo. All of this being said, let's be pragmatists here. The majority of the accusations being discussed in this video are precisely that. Accusations. I think it's highly likely that given the volume, scope and nature of certain high profile resignations, it looks pretty clear to me that some of these accusations are undoubtedly true. Fuck, Ashraf Ismail has already apologised for his CD creeping. But similarly, it would be foolish to assume that every single allegation is automatically true. What I have made of this so far is that there is an undeniable structural pattern of abuse and an institutional mechanism in place for covering this kind of thing up, protecting the company and crushing the accusers. I have no doubt some of these fucks are guilty, and I have no doubt that everyone with a grudge against one of these fucks has turned up to throw a rock or two whilst there are targets of opportunity. Let's wait until the court case decides. Or they just pay out hundreds of millions of dollars in compensation claims and start mailing out non-disclosure agreements to all of the victims. I guess all I'm saying is, don't assume everyone who has been accused is guilty. It's the Me Too hunting season, and plenty of innocents are being loaded onto the back of the van with the guilty and being bussed off to the slaughterhouse. My parting thought, however, would simply be this. As cynical as I am about the legitimacy of the late stage Me Too epoch, and whilst being fully aware that there are snowflakes in the workforce who think that they can get PTSD because the fucking latte machine is broke, and whilst accepting that some workplace sociopaths will happily cry wolf to get their competition sacked, whilst being truly wary and sceptical of unproven accusations, I will note the following. It took me barely any fucking effort to discover the following. Chief Creative Officer Serge Hasco was a creeper of legendary status within Ubisoft, it was well known within the company that Eve Guimau protected him. Hasco's reputation for being a vile bastard was common knowledge amongst the staff, globally. And I'm talking throughout the whole company. It was not a fucking secret. He was a horrible, terrible cunt to the staff. Everybody knew he was untouchable. And buried deep in the corner of an obscure forum about workplace experiences, I found the following quote from a former Ubisoft employee, which perfectly crystallises the reports about the sexual abuse at Ubisoft. I quote, When it comes to this stuff, they generally care more about looking good than genuinely being good. So they would spend a lot of time looking like they were doing great diversity work, but under the surface, it's a shit show. You gotta laugh at Eve Guimau's style though. He presides over a sexual predator factory, sends lawyers in to crush complaint, he's the wingman for the video game industry's most infamous fucking creeper, and when Ubisoft gets busted and the situation gets blown wide open, he issues a statement telling everyone how terrible this situation is, 
and how he won't tolerate it. Tolerate it? He was in charge of the situation. And I don't believe for a second he didn't know all about it. After all, he's the one that's been indicated as being complicit in covering it up for years. The best way I can sum up the profound state of utter moral bankruptcy faced by Ubisoft and the severity of their failures to protect their own staff is this. When your HR department could potentially get sued for negligence because they don't issue new staff members with rape whistles and mace spray, then it's probably about time you reconsidered your staff welfare policies. I think the most sombre thing about all of this shit is this. By actively engaging in covering up these abuses, Ubisoft allowed the said same abuses to continue. By not stamping it out and not sacking the perpetrators, Ubisoft helped maintain the situation and facilitated abuse. There are people who got hurt precisely because Ubisoft was siding with the criminals and not the victims. That is sinister in the extreme and really very tragic. Ducks, fucking ducks. On a happier note, we got lots of nice information about rubber ducks. Ubisoft did its big E3 Substitute 2020 knockoff reveal. Ubisoft Forward. Welcome to the show. It's a big day for Ubisoft here, and we are super excited you've joined us. Super excited, super excited, super excited, super excited. Fuck me. Ubisoft Forward is a name invented by a room full of corporate suits, for fuck's sake. It's got no soul, no character, no imagination. Like corporate fucking art, it's designed to just not offend the most amount of people. With the real-life dollar flu, leg-humping humanity, the world in lockdown and E3 cancelled, Ubisoft decided to put their own trade show on instead. Needless to say, it was a bit shit. It should worry you that the people making this game think rubber ducks are perfect for their target audience. Shit that might be very amusing to eight-year-olds in a game where the other thing they think is perfect for their target audience is gambling. It should creep people out that Ubisoft packs a game full of gambling loot boxes and clearly behaves like they have a sub 11-year-old audience. Oh, I forgot, the game is certified 18 only because, you know, no kid ever got his mum to buy a game for him ever. Or her. I'm not sexist. Although I do enjoy my bigot sandwiches. I'm not going to judge anyone that sells weed and porn for a living. We all have our hustle. But if I found out a kindergarten teacher was doing it, I would question exactly where they were meeting their customers. Most significantly, at a time where The Division 2 is fucking broken, the second raid seems to be a stitch-up deception job and the company is facing a tsunami of sexual abuse claims, I think it's entirely typical of Ubisoft's PR policy to discuss ducks in their big reveal. Pretend the bad stuff doesn't exist and talk about the children. What a bunch of chillingly sinister creep weasels. I guess my overarching feeling about Duckgate is this. It's actually touching that open world devs would spend so much time and attention on creating intricate details in the open game world. I would, however, note, how the fuck do they have the spare time to waste on this shit? Fucking ducks. There are sections of terrain that hang up your character, invisible doors, gaps in the terrain, and a whole host of problems that impact the player experience. But somehow, these guys have got all day to fuck around with ducks. Just saying. The Loot System one of the major problems is that frequently when players get decent loot drops, it's what has been poetically called Rainbow Loot. 
e.g. it will be a combination of DPS and skill perks, which is no use to man nor beast, unless of course you're the kind of stupid dumb fuck incompetent shart tard that would roll a self-made Frankenstein DPS slash defense combo build. You know, like I would do basically. Personally, I don't mind the fucked up loot, because I don't give a shit about loot, and the loot don't give a shit about me. It's the perfect relationship for someone who doesn't care. Sadly, however, anyone who does give a shit about this game quickly realises that grinding out a perfect gear set feels like the game is literally taking the piss out of you. If RNG doesn't fuck you, then that item will drop with a mismatch of traits. Well, here is an insight. I've had one exchange with Ubisoft Massive about the loot drop algorithms. Here is what I learned. The guy in charge of the loot system described how it worked. I pointed out that he was completely mistaken. I had to explain to him what was actually going on based on information that I got from another YouTuber. The loot boss man pulled out the usual trope of, I will have a look into this because what you are saying is not consistent with the numbers we have at our end or something. This did not instill confidence in me. Ubisoft Massive has demonstrated repeatedly that they think the loot system works one way and this is not supported by observations in game by players. Then there are the fancy bamboozling graphs being rolled out on State of the Game. I used to know a geezer like this. Every time his boss asked him how he was getting on, he would bust out some fancy diagrams and show lots of graphs with numbers on them. His boss fucking loved him. Shame, the useless bastard never actually managed to fix anything, but he was really popular right up until the moment he got fired. Impressive graph skills though. Time will tell if Nicky Coopins is better or worse than this guy. I would however note that the game is 18 months old, the loot drops are still fucking balked, so maybe it's time for less talky and more fixy, Nicky. Well, if we're going to look at graphs, let's go to 21 kilotons fucking science lab and create a graph that perfectly summarises the current loot system in The Division 2. Look, I'm sure Nicky Coopins is doing his best with fuck all budget and a couple of interns. I'm sure he's up against it, but the players don't care about massive self-created resource problems. They just want the loot system fixed before the game is entirely abandoned at the end of year two. Yeah, I said it. They are going to abandon the game at the end of year two. You heard it here first. Players are just fucked off with completely nonsensical randomised shit loot, and so they should be. If Nicky Coopins were Santa, six year old boys would be getting giant dildos for Christmas, and grannies would be getting crack pipes and butt plugs and leather choke masks. If you want any proof that Ubisoft Massive are pulling your fucking chain, then compare this. Massive have thus far been incapable of unfucking the loot tables, and we are well into year two. Massive are routinely churning out absolutely mint, polished, finely crafted cosmetic loot box promotions nearly every month. And that shit, that shit right there, is on time, working perfectly, and financially supported. Players ain't paying money for in-game loot drops, so as far as Ubisoft Massive goes, players can get to fuck. That is why the loot drops are still broken. That's why the best response to the complaints about rainbow loot and low rolls is introduce one or two slight fixes over the course of 18 months and periodically roll out Nicky coupons on state of the game to blow bubbles and hold up graphs with curves and scribbles on them. We changed how this is calculated to a normal distribution, which gives you a nice little bell curve and this is how it now works in Tio Look, nobody gives a fuck, mate. Nothing personal, but nobody gives a fuck about graphs, statistics, and little presentations on state of the game. Or empty promises. It's July 2020, and the loot tables are still balked. Players 
give a fuck about the situation being fixed. They don't care about excuses or future plans. If somebody's toilet is broken and every time you flush the shitter, sewage backs up into the bowl, you want a plumber to come around and fix it, right? You don't want a plumber to come around your gaff and have lots of meetings with other plumbers, do pretty little PowerPoint presentations talking about power curves and predicted outcomes and changes that you plan to implement in the future. Someone ultimately has to roll their fucking sleeve up, stick their hand down the shitter and fix the blockage. Ubisoft needs to fix the problem. Not talk about fixing it for 18 months and then not fix it. The fact that the loot Grinch is showing off PowerPoint graphs on State of the Game tells me that he is more concerned with impressing senior managers and convincing them that work is being done rather than fixing the broken fucking toilet that is the Division 2 loot system. Honestly, at this point, if they can't fix it by the end of the week, just change the loot table so that every time a piece of loot drops, there's a 3% chance the loot will be a random, Max rolled non rainbow gear item. Job fucking done. Maybe make it 5%. At least that way someone can grind for a week and not end up with a pile of mismatched shit. Oh yeah, and they nerfed my pistol. Not even kidding. I only use a pistol and I only use one type. In my last video, I said this. Well, I'll stick with my pop gun and rummaging through dustbins and bags for scrap until such time as they nerf pistol builds too. Fuck me, at this rate, they'll probably start nerfing dustbins. So in TU10, the devs decided to buff all the pistols, apart from the only weapon I ever use. They nerfed that. How spectacularly petty. Although I would note, it's entertaining that they thought I had an emotional investment in my character or the loot. It's hilarious that at a time where half the game is fucking broken, someone has the time to get a project team to focus on nerfing my weapon as some kind of perverted developer retribution. Don't get me wrong, I am very flattered that they watch my videos. But hey, it's not my fault that the game is as fucked as the Hindenburg. The raid was a fix. Well, the race for Worlds First is finally over, a feat of endurance and a test of skill for the division's finest and most noble competitors. Well, maybe also a massive corrupt promotional PR shitshow that backfired on Ubisoft Massive because it would certainly appear that the whole competition was a fix either orchestrated by Ubisoft Massive in Malmo or by data miners distributing a comprehensive tactical breakdown of the encounters. I don't know the full facts here, and this is a huge and complex issue that's dragged on for fucking weeks and weeks, so I'm not going to name names. I also don't want to cast aspersions on any of the participants. The one fact I do know is that they are all better players than me. Besides, you can Google it yourselves. Although I personally wouldn't bother looking for information on Ubisoft's official bought and fucking paid for subreddit censorship factory, because when I went there for information, two of the top three posts were about fucking cosplay. The game's broke, someone is leaking insider information to corrupt the world first competition, and executive managers at Ubisoft are under fire for going full Epstein on their staff in elevators. But you can rely on those servile and censorious shills over on the subreddit, to delete everything unless it's about cosplay, loot boxes, or shilling. Allegedly. Anyway, here is what I have fathomed about the situation thus far. There was a competition to get world first on the second raid. The top teams included lots of YouTubers and streamers. A few shady things were noted, like on one team, certain people's mics were being kept off the stream possibly because they were explaining the tactics in advance. When it was over, one of the streamers announced publicly that 1. 
they'd used the DPS exploit to grind up their gear and didn't get banned. And two, they beat the raid using a set of tactics that certainly appears to be leaked to them and other top clans by Ubisoft Massive. Now there is a counter narrative that the information was in fact data mined and someone invested incredible effort in formatting the document with official Ubisoft slash division branding and making it look completely authentic. Then the person went on the subreddit on a Smurf account and tried to sell the story that it was an accidental leak and it was all data mined and it was nothing to do with Ubisoft Massive. Yannick Bolshero's comments to Kutaku speaks volumes. With his usual fox-like slippery charm, he went full PR tard, put on his grown-up corporate persona and his serious I have never wanked at work face and made grown-up fake concerned pretend to care noises come out of his lying hole. I decided to run Yannick's responses through the 21 kiloton bullshitter meter and this is what I got. The leaks don't come from Ubisoft as an entity which is slither speak for we are not going to own this as a corporation. We're disappointed like everyone else. Which is PR shit speak for we're gutted that we got caught leaking info to streamers. We want to take that seriously. <laughs> we want to take it seriously? Then take it seriously. We will see what the investigation surfaces. That means that Yannick has worse grammar than me and that's no mean boast. And my personal favourite, we still want to celebrate the achievement. Which is community deception speak for, we're just going to do our tilted head fake care face, do nothing and hope everyone forgets about the fact that Ubisoft Massive just deleted progress of thousands of players to increase loot box revenue while simultaneously running a bent world first competition and proving to the entire fucking world that all of its claims about the anti-cheat and the manual checking of all bans was complete and utter bullshit. Personally, I have nothing against Yannick Bonchereau. He is probably one of my favourite Ubisoft corporate sock puppets. Admittedly, he's such a skillful bullshitter that if he told me that hitting myself in the head would hurt, I would probably feel compelled to punch myself a few times in the fucking mouth just to check. But as much as I like him and his disillusioned attitude towards his life as a professional liar, there comes a time where you have to own it. I mean, if he was one of the guards operating a gas chamber, it's one thing to sulk around complaining that the job just isn't really you. It's another thing to throw your Mauser 98 and tin hat on the floor and run towards the allied lines. So as much as I have a soft spot for the guy, the competition for World First was a stitch up job one way or another. Ubisoft's statements about cheat enforcement were totally bullshit and Yannick is covering up the fact that this entire shit show was fixed and insiders and favoured content creators were somehow, from somewhere, leaked all the info they needed to cap the raid in a timely fashion and no doubt neatly fit into Ubisoft's pre-arranged marketing announcements, time to coincide with the raid's completion. Ubisoft just ran a rigged competition and I have no doubt that nobody at Ubisoft will be punished and nobody will be held accountable. Ubisoft doesn't even punish its rapers, so I highly doubt it will punish people for a bit of match fixing and lying about the anti-cheat measures which they've been doing for years. Then again, as another wise commentator pointed out, Ubisoft has already written into the terms of service that it has the right to disqualify any world first winner on whatever grounds it chooses. Because let's face it, imagine if my clan got worlds first. I don't imagine Ubisoft Massive would be very happy if games as a service are a pox was up in the boo for everyone to see. So there is a case to be made that the info was data mined and then leaked just to blow the lid off the whole shit show just so that someone could watch the world burn because Ubisoft Massive could technically disqualify anyone they wanted and determine for themselves who was world first. Then again, I'm pretty sure Ubisoft wanted to control exactly which name went up there and do it in the most publicly legitimate way possible. So fuck, I don't know which is the case. Your guess is as good as mine. One thing I can say with certainty though is that Ubisoft are definitely capable of rigging it. 
I mean, their senior executives are a bunch of Epsteins. The senior managers protect them. The company turns children into gambling addicts and their community management operation is run like the fucking mafia. Match rigging is small fry to an operation that institutionalises sexual abuse and runs a kiddie gambling racket. And they've done worse than this. But that, as they say, is a story for another day. At the end of the day, the name that appears on the boo for all players to see is critical to the brand's perception. That's why they put a clause in the rules allowing them to disqualify anyone. So frankly, whatever happened, and whatever name is up there now, the match was rigged. Because certain people were never going to be allowed to win. The Great Division Server Crash, episode 192. Yes, Ubisoft decided to organise a special event to coincide with the underwhelming Ubisoft Forward presentation. Any player logging in was going to win some prizes. Nobody was actually expecting this to be a genuinely hard competition, and in fact, in the end, nobody won. Because all the servers crashed. Sorry, both the servers crashed, and no fucker could log in. Genius! FYI, hamsters need food and water. So what has been the community management team's response to all of this? Well, they do what they always do. They avoid talking about the real issues, and when that isn't possible, they just completely avoid being around. No, seriously, after the Raid World First scandal, they just cancelled State of the Game and hid under their beds. They claimed they couldn't do State of the Game because of Black Lives Matter. Horseshit. Oh, and then they fucked off for the summer break. What manner of sorcery is this? They can't do State of the Game because they're on holiday. Look, Ubisoft Massive has spent the entire year working from fucking home. Now they're on summer break at fucking home. I'm pretty sure, since they are all still at fucking home, someone could spare one hour to turn on their laptop, window out of the pornography, and do a quick state of the game. Talking of lockdown, on the plus side, at least there won't be any gaming conventions this year, so at least we know there won't be any Ubisoft staff creeping around the halls of E3. Just saying. So what other miscellaneous business is left to discuss? Content creator EK1 got banned from Twitch chat for saying that a community manager kept missing. No disrespect, but I'm a shit player and I sometimes watch community managers play The Division just to feel better about myself. The main takeaway here is that it's yet another example of Ubisoft Mass's policy of censoring the living shit out of anyone on public channels unless they say servile, flattering, complimentary shit about the community managers in the game. I'm sorry, but most of us can't lie as well as them. They finally fixed the cooldown issue with the Revive Hive. Players were unable to change their gear until the Revive Hive was fully off cooldown, so they came up with an ingenious fix. Nerf it. Yeah, they reduced the cooldown, but reduced the overall number of charges. Hey fucking presto. Reduced cooldown, reduced effectiveness, Everyone's a loser. I swear to God, if these guys were opticians, they would try and cure your photosensitivity by poking you in the fucking eye with a sharp stick. There have also been Legion reports that The Division 2 is causing a complete crash on PS4. One guy apparently had 30 crashes on PS4 during one mission. I've been reliably informed that Ubisoft Massive are urgently trying to fix the problem by doing the following. Ignoring all the complaints, pretending it's not happening, and sticking their fucking fingers in their ears and going la la la. It's how they deal with nearly every other problem in the game, so you can't really fault them for falling back on such a tried and tested strategy. I always start out making a news dump, determined to balance the good with the bad, and keep it jaunty and upbeat. The problem is, 
Ubisoft Massive are constantly fucking up big style and I can never find anything they did right. So don't shoot the messenger. What the fuck do you expect me to say? If you wanted me to stay positive, I'd have to discuss how well the loot box store is doing. I will stress, however, that The Division could have been a brilliant franchise, and I have a love-hate relationship with it, and this is a sentiment that I hear from a lot of die-hard players. The problem is Ubisoft are too greedy, Ubisoft are entirely and consistently dishonest, they turn the game into a fucking pachinko gambling machine, they only ever invest in cosmetic events, they're either too unfucked or incompetent to fix their own broken shit, and most importantly, at this point in 2020, I don't think they even care. There was a scandal about leaked raid info, their response was to cancel state of the game, the loot system's fucked, their response was to go on holiday, the company is involved in systemic and widespread sexual assault scandals, their response, cover it up. Players need to stop buying into Ubisoft Massive's bullshit. I see it all the time. Inch by inch, week by week, they creep the goalposts closer and closer together, and it's accepted as normal. They rebranded cosmetic loot boxes as apparel events, and now people talk about the events like it's not about pedo caches, cosmetic items, and kiddie gambling. They rebranded patches as title updates, and players talk about title updates like it's not Ubisoft desperately trying to patch this game into a state of semi-functionality. Ubisoft has well and truly sold the notion of live service game to the players, and now I see people on the subreddit justifying their failures by saying dumb ass shit like, Ah, well, this is a live service game, so that broken stuff will get fixed during the life cycle of the game. Look, chums, live service means we pay for the game in advance, and then they do a little bit of work unfucking it, depending on launch sales and loot box profits. And at this late stage in the game, I'm pretty sure that The Division 2 is going to remain fucked until the end of year two, when they abandon it. Ubisoft are not an honest broker, and I'm glad people are finally starting to see the facade split wide open. They bleat on about women of Ubisoft, and then their senior managers sexually assault them. They bleat on about caring for the little children, then addict them to gambling mechanics. They said we can earn everything free in-game, now we have to buy a season pass to do that. They said they would fix the loot tables. But a year later, they don't even know how their own loot tables are supposed to work. They said they need loot boxes to make video games viable. Then posted record profits. They said all year one content was free and then charged us for Warlords of New York. They bleat on about inclusivity and drug and rape their staff members, whilst Eve Gimo allegedly covers it up. They promised us the moon on a fucking string, and then they just pissed up a rope. Corporations are giant sociopathic money printing machines, and they give no fucks about truth, promises, women's rights, the players, and more precisely, you. Christ, recently they haven't even been giving much of a fuck about making video games. They're more obsessed with monetizing the existing ones and peddling loot boxes. Ubisoft cares about shareholder profits. And the truth is only as significant as their ability to manipulate it. Why the fuck do you think Ubisoft hires so many damn community managers and commits so much of its operating revenue to public relations, advertising and promotion? It's because it's all about perception. So maybe some people need to see this corporation for what it really is, rather than projecting their own relationship on it just because one community manager said something nice to them once, and now they feel special. Or someone just retweeted something positive that they said, and now they think they're all mates. Eve Gimo says this, This is unacceptable, as toxic behaviours are in direct contrast to values on which I have never compromised and never will. He was committed to implementing profound changes across the company to improve and strengthen our workplace culture. 
But his executives sound like a bunch of rapers. His company is a world leader in peddling kiddie gambling, and recently they can barely make a game worth a fucking shit. In fact, nearly all of their games are reskins of old games. Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Ghost Recon. Or they're just remonetizing the same old game. If Yves Guillemot is really committed to implementing profound change, then here's an idea. Stop covering up for your rapey friends in the company and stop acting like you didn't know what was going on all along. And while you're at it, quit the kiddie gambling. Then invest in making some decent games rather than throwing the company behind monetization strategies because, frankly, Ubisoft is burning all of its public support and customer loyalty. And its brand identity is getting thrown on the fucking dumpster fire as well. Discovering that Ubisoft has a severe company-wide issue with sexual predators which reaches right up to the highest echelons of management and the man standing next to the CEO, Yves Guillemot, does not surprise me in the slightest. I mean, why would Ubisoft not have lots of predators in its highest tiers of management? Think about it. Ubisoft's business model is built on predatory monetization, microtransactions and gambling mechanics. It is a company that is built on predation. So it should come as no surprise that the people at the very top making all of the important decisions are predators too. I'm sure history will be the judge of Ubisoft's many crimes. I can only speak factually about my personal experiences of dealing with them and the things I've witnessed since covering the division. They get their proxies and minions to harass people on social media who are critical of the franchise. They censor the fuck out of their Twitch and YouTube comment section. They ban people for asking awkward questions or pointing out lies. They took over the subreddit and installed their own fucking henchmen who censor the fuck out of that platform too. One of the Ubisoft star players hit my channel with a false DMCA strike and Ubisoft Massive claimed it was nothing to do with them because star players are not associated with the company and there was nothing they could do about it. And then a few months later stipulated in their terms and conditions that star players are fucking representatives and agents of Ubisoft. They paid off a bunch of content creators to tell the world how fucking excellent The Division 2 is and the game launched unfinished. The last world tier and endgame didn't even exist at the time. The first raid was a year late. But lo and fucking behold, their paid off content creators and reviewers were bleating on about what a masterpiece the game was before it was finished. That's like doing a review of a car before the wheels have been delivered. How do you do that? How do you tell everyone that the game is brilliant before it's finished? Did they use a crystal ball? Well, they'd better get a new one because, you know, they were wrong. Let's get that straight. They do business with social media influencers that are involved in felony crimes, including, but not limited to, fraud and deceptive sales practices. Just check the statue of shame. It's all written there. Fuck, one streamer who was critical of the game got doxxed and three fanatical fanboys worked up into a lava by someone turned up at his house to beat the shit out of him. From my personal experiences of dealing with Ubisoft Massive, it seems crystal clear that the entire organisation is structured around the principles of deceit, dirty tactics and cover-ups. Honestly, sometimes it's felt more like dealing with a criminal syndicate than a legitimate corporate entity. They lie, they cheat, they are organised around the principles of cover-ups and using PR to change the perception of real events without any regard for the truth. It should, at this point, be blindingly fucking obvious that this has now become their corporate culture. It's a corporate culture, organised around deception. It's hard-baked into the way that Ubisoft operates as a corporate entity. It should therefore come as no surprise that as rape and sexual assault accusations rolled in, Ubisoft automatically, and on autopilot, immediately acted to cover up the claims and suppress the accusers, because that is exactly how I have always seen them operate in the past. But for now, good luck and happy hunting.